If you're in private practice, no doubt you've come across some of the trials and triumphs of being in small business. That's why we're speaking to Andrew Griffiths. He's Australia's leading expert and author in small business and shares with us some tips. These are going to be great for you whether you're involved with starting a business, growing a business or thinking about selling your business. We're here with small business expert, Andrew Griffiths. Andrew, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Lovely to be here with you, Tara. So Andrew, you've been writing business books for 10 years. Can you tell me, what do you think the state of small business is like in Australia and around the world at the moment? I think, it, I think it's different in every part of the world, realistically. I, I think like in North America, it's still tough. Yeah. I think in the UK, it's very tough. I think in Australia, we've kind of starting to see that the, the that monster, the global financial crisis, is, is, hasn't really killed us and we're, there's life after it. But we're coming out the other side of that now. Yeah. And I see a lot of small business owners, in particular, who are really quite fatigued. Those that have kind of survived it, there's been a lot of emotional stress and, and feeling quite fried. And there's no doubt in my mind that the world is a completely different place now to what it was before the global financial crisis. And the, the small business scene and the big business scene is completely different. And when you say the small business scene and the big business scene is different, what are some things that are different? Particularly if some people do maybe a little bit of work in small businesses and they might work for the government or something like that as well. I think there's a lot of soul searching at the corporate side of the the, yeah. the food chain, realistically. I think there's been a lot of loss of credibility in the mm -hmm. high-end corporate side of it. With We realise now, just because you're big doesn't mean that you're going to be yeah, there forever. Yeah, you can't fail, that's right. And, uh, and I think that that's probably the biggest thing for us. We've seen huge names mm. that have failed and it's like, okay, well, that's, uh, that's a fundamental change for us. With small business, I think that we've realised that we're part of the globe. And even being over here in Australia, we, we've realised that a global financial crisis that realistically started in Iceland, yes. then went on to other markets, had a huge mm -hmm. impact on businesses in Alice Springs. Mm. Yeah, I think before we often thought, oh, we're in little silos, we're, we're removed, oh, that's a big bad world over there, we're not affected. So that's the biggest, I think, intellectual mm. realisation for us at a small business level, is that we're part of the world. And if you look at that in a positive way, that means we've got all these incredible opportunities. Yeah. But it is a fundamental shift that I see in a lot of businesses that wasn't there before the global financial crisis. And do you think the attributes that help small businesses or big business survive through their global financial crisis, do you think that's going to help or do you think there's different things that we need to be successful for the future? I think it's, it I think there's, depends what stage of business you're in. Yeah. And that's one of the challenges that I have in what I'm doing. We've got this term called SME mm -hmm. and it's thrown around uh, around the world and to me it's it's like putting cows it's and sheep together. It's a huge difference, isn't and, it? Up to well, $2 million turnover exactly. or something you, to 50 you, grand or something. I know, you get, two, <laughs> you get three people in a business and you're comparing them to a business with 50 people in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. To me, they are about as different as you can possibly mm. have. And I'm a bit of an evangelist for trying to, to, to understand and change that terminology because yeah. it's it's redundant. It no longer serves any purpose. Mm. But what I, what I see a lot of, uh, I guess the end result of the global financial crisis at a small business level is that there are a lot of businesses that had never been through a tough time before yes. and they didn't really know what to do. They landed mm. in the middle of this thing going, well, what do I do? The last nine, mm. ten years in Australia, have been it's been wonderful times. Right. It's been easy to make money in business realistically. All of a sudden a global financial crisis came along and people going, well, I haven't had to chase customers before. I haven't had to business mm. develop or market and all of a sudden now I do. So there was that kind of reaction where people struggled to try and figure out how to do. Those people who had been through a few tough times before, yeah. they know, put the wagons in a circle, cut your costs, be creative, look after those existing customers as much as you can, be more innovative, etc. And, and they've had to, to even try and come up with more ways of, of of being smarter about what they're doing. So mm. I think it's one of those times, and we're here now, we're going, well, we're all a bit tired, we're all a little bit emotional, but 
we realise that, that there's there's all of these opportunities ahead, and and the business world has changed. So we need to change with it, and I think that's the real key for business success, big or small. The world has changed, and you know, it's a point I, I guess <laughs> I'm keeping keep making. But same at a corporate level. Yeah. You know, you can't keep doing the same things you did all the time before and expect uh, the different outcomes. So what are some of the changes, particularly if we've got mm. business owners out there who are fatigued? What are the changes they need to make to continue to be successful? At the moment, I'm on a big uh, a big racket of saying to everyone, you've got to have a break. You, you can not yeah. run a successful business, big or small or middle sized. What if they if say they don't exhausted. have time for a break? I say to people, make up a list of all the reasons why you shouldn't go on a break. You know, yeah. you haven't got the money, you haven't got the time, uh, you know, that need to walk the dog, I've got this, I've got. The longer the list is, the more important it is that you have a break. Yeah. Because you, you cannot build a successful business when you're exhausted, mentally mm. fatigued. Uh, emotionally distraught, whatever Grumpy. it may be. Have a Panadol, <laughs> have a lay down, get up and then you've got to come back. So you've got to get yourself back into the right state of mm. mind. I think the second realisation is that because the world has changed and the greatest way that I see change is, is how we communicate to yeah. different markets. And, and I see that, uh, one example, I spoke at a, a, to a large number of like financial planners, mm -hmm. a thousand of them. And, uh, and these are all predominantly men, maybe 40 to 55 age group. And I asked a thousand of them, how many of them use Twitter as a social yeah. media? And, and three out of a thousand use Twitter. Wow. Now that to me was a really interesting kind of was that observation. Recent, that was in the last few weeks. Oh wow. And it was interesting for me, not the fact that they don't use Twitter, that is almost irrelevant from my point of view in that, but the fact that they don't embrace social media mm. says, well, okay, you're busy looking after your clientele who are the same age and, and similar to you. What are you doing about the new clients coming through? How are you communicating to those new people that are, that are communicating in a mm. different way? And you're going to be ostracized. So those kind of, uh, I think, things that I'm seeing, uh, we need to be able to change and adapt. One communication method doesn't fit all yeah. these days. We've got to be able to communicate socially. We've got to be able to communicate more directly with our mm. clients. We've got to actually listen to our clients again. And competition is increasing. We're about yeah. to enter this incredible entrepreneurial age. And like Gen Y's, another great, I hear so many business owners bagging Gen Y, oh yeah. Gen Y. You're not we're, almost, change we're almost obsolete now. There's, I'm sure we, exactly. need, we need a new book about the new generation. Oh, Can you write one of those? I will. For us? I will. And, and I'm so <laughs> tired of hearing people bag Gen Y. Yeah. And I kind of go, You're not going to change. We're old now. Gen we're y. thirty. <laughs> we're going to change ourselves. You yeah. know, like that's the only the only way to do it. So mm. I see this real soul searching period in business where people mm -hmm. are going, okay, that was then. Now to go forward, I need to really look at what I'm doing and I need to do it differently. Mm -hmm. I need to communicate across all markets. I need to stand out from the crowd, and that's an old concept, but how we stand out it's is a lot more different now. now. We've got to use public relations a lot mm -hmm. more. There's so many more media, there's blogs, there are Twitter, there's there's Facebook, there's there's cable TV, there's, mm. there's thousands of publications, there's all these ways that we can get into the media, and that is really the new form of advertising, in, in my particular opinion. And it's accessible, it's easy yeah. you know, to, to get into a lot of these and is there things. still a role for traditional marketing, do you think? I think so. You know, I, the door-to-door -door delivery and things like that? Well, I, ironically, Tara, I think there's more of a role for it now, because I think yeah. most businesses have got lazy. Oh, yeah. we just do an electronic newsletter, we'll send that out yeah. once a week, once a month. We'll post a tweet. Know, and, and do that. And I tell my clients to print brochures. Yeah. I, I know that it's not, you know, environmentally as, as you know, as wonderful as it could be, but you need to be able to stand out. Yeah. And now it's a rarity to have a printed brochure mm -hmm. in a small business rather than yeah. the norm. So I think that that's an essential mm. thing. Uh, I I believe there's so many of those kind of key key things that we need to be doing, which are in many ways old fashioned, but they're, they're incredibly important. And, and as business owners, we have to really stop and think about how do we want to engage with our mm. customers? You know, still yeah. so many people are so busy looking for the next customer while they're treating the current customer like dirt. Mm. You know, and then yeah. they wonder why they go. You know, mm. customer loyalty, emotion, it, that, that you know, inspired communication, I, I call it. It's about really trying to connect with people. And it's yeah. the subject of my latest book, The Me Myth. The whole yeah. concept there is to, it's not all about me, you know. And so yeah. many of us are living in that state of mind where mm. we're just self-absorbed because we're bombarded with so many messages telling us that it's all about us. Yeah. If you want to be truly successful in business, then, then things like learning to really put yourself in the shoes mm. of your customer. That, that's and one sometimes of the most you have to be uncomfortable, tools. don't you? Totally. Yeah. Get uncomfortable in your life. And so many businesses, again, when they're 
they've, they're, they're so static, they're so staid, mm. they're so, they don't notice the business fatiguing mm. around them. They don't notice the paint fading on the walls. They don't notice, the guys don't iron their clothes anymore. <laughs> they don't notice that the, 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 the office kind of smells and mm. you know, the flowers died four weeks ago. <laughs> now I did a mystery shopper survey a little while back at, at a car dealership of a luxury brand. And, uh, and I do that, kind of go in under darkness and wear dark glasses and act like you're buying a car. Oh, there's Andrew and, uh, Griffiths, the marketing guy. That's, uh, I wear a bad disguise, you know, a beard of bees. And by the door of this luxury dealership was a dead bird and a man of cigarette butts. And, uh, oh and I took gosh. a photo of this on my phone and rara. And the, the dealer owner, when I told him about it, we argued about this. He said, there is no way knowing. I walked past that you door. You brought that dead bird with you, didn't <laughs> you? Right. He said, I walk in and out of that door 50 times a day. There is no way there's a dead bird and a pile of cigarette butts by that door, I guarantee it. Took him downstairs and, and showed him. The bird had been there for a while. It didn't, you know, didn't die of natural causes in old age. <laughs> you know, it, it, this thing is, you know, horrible. <laughs> And it's interesting, we all get like that. We all get a yeah. bit desensitized. It's like websites. We build a website and then go, okay, my job's done now. Whereas really, the minute you put a website up, your job's just beginning. Yeah, it's outdated already. It's just already. a start. Your website needs to, to be evolving mm. daily, weekly, monthly. So there's this wonderful, innovative age at hand. And I, and I see this great opportunity for small business. I don't think there has ever been such a wonderfully entrepreneurial period mm. in, in the history of mankind. Mm. We have these incredible tools. We have demand from people. We have the ability to be able to create just about anything. And, and real, real creation and real, uh, real innovation happens at the small business level. Yeah. It doesn't happen in large corporations. That's, mm. We have this belief that the large corporations are the, the center of innovation. It is actually small business where most innovation happens, yeah. where the greatest of ideas come out. They just end up in big business, big business. by the time they go through the, the food mm. chain again. So. So if you can take advantage of this, this wonderful, I guess, opportunities that are around that, I think the future, it couldn't be better for small business. Yeah. As long as you're prepared to change, as long as you're prepared to put the focus on your customers, not on yourself, as long as you're open-minded, as long as you're committing to, to really working on your business every day mm -hmm. in, in, and being modern and uh, I guess progressive in what you're doing, I, I think your chances of success are fantastic. Andrew, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you for giving us those great tips, particularly at the end where you kind of listed them off for us. I feel like I was reading one of your books, <laughs> even though how many, how many have we got? Six 101 series or seven? Eight. Eight 101 series. So hopefully we'll have a read of those so we can get our 808 tips. Absolutely. Plus 160 bonus tips, of course. <laughs> You've got a value add, Tara. You've <laughs> thank got a value you. add. Andrew, thank you so much for speaking You're to us. Welcome. It's been great. Thanks, Tara. So we've just got some wonderful insights from Andrew Griffiths about how we can make our small business more successful. Andrew, thank you so much for speaking with us today. My pleasure.